Hey guys, so, um, a lot of people lately have been requesting uh, a tutorial on how I motion track, and how personally I motion track, because it seems that I do it a lot differently than um, the majority of people in the community. So I thought I would just do a really quick um, kind of walkthrough of how I do it. So I have a cinematic uh, pre-recorded for this, and this has already been used for a track, but... Um, I'm going to retrack it just for this tutorial. Uh, so I'm going to take you through how I get my cinematics, this nice rotating pan effect um, in Modern Warfare 2. Um, and this is only for uh, PC Modern Warfare 2. This isn't going to work for console. Uh, so if you if you don't have a PC copy, you're pretty much out of luck. Um, so what you're going to do is really um, line up your camera like so on the point that you want to focus around in game and you're going to want to make sure that your yaw speed on PC is set to 20 and if you don't know what yaw speed is you can uh, look up tutorial there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube um, how to set yaw speed but um, I use 20 anywhere from 10 to 30 is going to get you a nice um, clean rotation and once you have your yaw speed like that set it to a button and just hold it and pan at the same time and you're going to get a nice clean rotation. And once you have that down, um, bring it into After Effects, and this is where the tutorial begins. So I'm going to go over to Composition Settings, and since I, re I don't record at 1280 by uh, 720, I record at half of Full HD. I'm just going to set it to 1280 by 720 right now. And then scale it up so I don't get the spectating text. Alright, so nice, we have a clean cinematic. So now I'm going to go right to where the motion starts. I'm going to press B to start the uh, work area there. And then where I want it to stop, I'm going to hit N. So that's going to give me a nice, pretty good looking uh, track, or cinematic ready for tracking. So once you have that, that's the easy part. You're going to go into composition, add to render queue, um, down in output module uh, you're gonna go to JPEG sequence and you shouldn't have to change any settings under format options if your quality is really low uh, I, I use 9 but it's not gonna be a big deal if you use something lower than that so that's uh, the render settings so um, I'll just make a new folder Alright, so now we have, you want to put um, all of the JPEGs in a folder. If you don't, if you put it in the actual edit, like the folder for the edit, you're going to have JPEGs everywhere. And it's like 500 of them because it's 60 frames a second. So just call it track one. After Effects automatically adds um, a set of numbers at the name. So you won't have to worry about that. You're going to hit render. And what this does is it does a JPEG for every frame, and that's going to let you use a uh, uh to track the motion instead of um, something like Mocha or After Effects built-in uh, 2D tracker. And I'm using CS5. I know that CS6 has some kind of 3D tracker that it came with. I'm I haven't used it. I don't know anything about it. So uh, if you want to use that, you're on your own. All right. So now my JPEG sequence is done. I'm going to go into Buju, and this takes a while to open up for me, I don't know about you, but um, this is Buju 5.0. And really, you can render a JPEG sequence with any version of After Effects. I think you can even do it with Vegas if you don't have After Effects, um, but don't quote me on that. So now, in Buju, I'm going to go, just a new project, I'm going to go up here, Import Sequence, and then Tutorial... Track 1 is where we save the JPEGs. And now we have all the JPEGs. So just select the first one and hit open. And now it should recognize all the JPEGs. And of course we did it at 60 frames a second. So we're going to change the, same ra the frame rate to 60. And that's going to be okay. So now we have our cinematic that we can scrub through. So the next thing we're going to do, uh, track features, which the yellow squigglies. You're going to click those. 
Um, shouldn't have to change anything in here. I just hit start. I don't change any settings. And that's going to work. Okay, so my tracks are done. Um, I just skipped to the end of my rendering because it takes a while for me. Uh, even though I have a pretty good computer, I don't know how long it'll take for you guys, uh, depending on your specs. Uh, it should take only a minute or two. So now I have a bunch of squiggly yellow lines that don't help me at all. Uh, but this is the first step, and now what we're going to go over here, uh, right below track features, is a button called uh, Camera Solve. And we're going to hit Camera Solve and check uh, Optimize Camera Path Smoothness. And you shouldn't have to play with any of the settings. We're going to hit Start. And this should be a lot faster. It's already 86 for me. Um, but this is the easy part. This is just Buju figuring out the camera. So now we have some nice tracked uh, points that we can use um, on the cinematic. And so now the next step is going to be uh, scene geometry, add coordinate from hint, and we're going to change this to x-axis. And let's see, I'll pick, it needs to be two points uh, horizontal to each other. So these two look good. And once you have your two points con uh, selected, uh, connect to selected. Now you'll see two tracks connected. Uh, add coordinate from hint. Uh, this one's going to be a z-axis. And two points above each other. Or vertical to each other. So something like that. This is really rough. I don't know if it'll turn out. Um, I, I generally spend more time on this, but it's a tutorial. So uh, once you do that, connect to selected. And then finally, we're going to add another one as an origin. Pick where you want the text to go, or roughly where you want the text to go, and then connect to select it. And once you have all those done, uh, you're going to hit update coordinate frame, and you can close that. And now when we go into 3D mode, you can see the camera's up there, panning around, and it looks like the X and Y axes are lined up right. So now uh, we're done in Buju. We're going to go to export camera solve scale scene by 100 and then we're going to browse to our file going to call this tutorial track 1 and save and then export sequence apply display adjustments here and hit OK and while that's exporting we're going to open up Cinema 4D Now I use um, 11.5 because, in my opinion, it's the easiest to track with. Um, you can use you. I'm not. I. I've heard that uh, R13 uses some kind of weird animation JPEG thing to track. So, if you have R13 and it's a different process, then you're gonna have to look up a different tutorial for that. But this should work all the way up to R12, I think. But I'm not sure. Um, so now we have our export, all our JPEGs, and a Cinema 4D file. So open that up in Cinema 4D, just hit OK, and bring the timeline all the way out. So now we have a nice track. Um, now what we're going to do, double click here, down in the materials area, um, make a new material, uh, deselect specular, go to color, uh, the texture drop down, load image, And now it's going to freeze. Oh, there we go. Okay. We're going to go to Tutorial. Track 1. Track 1 Export. So it's the export that you exported out of Buju. You're going to select as the texture for the material. So now we have that. We're going to go up to the light thing in Cinema 4D. I'm not really sure what to call that. Uh, background. And then drag the material onto the background. So now we have, it looks like it's pretty well tracked. So that's the hard part. And if it looks like it's ready to go, if, if the, the coordinate um, things are staying in place when you're panning around, then you should have it done. And if not, um, just repeat the process 
but in Buju you use different dots and I generally that generally works for me if I if I use different dots or different uh points camera tracks um it'll work for me but this one looks pretty good so I'm going to go to MoGraph uh text object and we're going to have to rotate that rotate that 90 degrees okay um align this to the middle uh call it tutorial and just move that around so that's yeah that looks pretty good uh for a quick track so that's that's your text i mean you can play around with fonts play around if you know sometimes you guys have seen me put um cubes and spheres into array objects just have an array and then a cube and then put that in there you know you can play with it and do all kinds of stuff um but i just i just throw a bunch of primitives into an array object or a cloner object and that's going to give that you know the the spheres and cubes and junk you see in some of my tracks but just for text um we're good on text so now um what we're going to do is create um we're going to go over to the light thing again create a new floor and we have our floor we're going to right click cinema 4d tags compositing and here's our compositing tag and we want to um check compositing background on the compositing tag that we added to our floor and so now we have that and we can drag the material onto the floor and sometimes this doesn't work for me um, what I generally end up doing is um, going into one of my previous tracks grabbing the floor copying it into my new track. Um, but that's the process for getting the floor. I'm not sure why, but my Cinema 4D doesn't like me creating new floors um, for some reason. So, um, of course, in my editing pack, um, there are tracks with floors that you can take and use and um, copy and paste into your new tracks. So if, if it doesn't work for me, I'm, I'm I still haven't figured out, and all this time, I still haven't figured out why creating new floors, it, it, it seems like a 50-50 chance that it will actually work for me. Um, so I just have my um, floor from a different track, and what I'm going to do is um, take my material uh, for this track, drop it onto the material of the floor, so now it um, actually composites properly. So with the floor... Um, you want to drag it up just so it's right behind the text. And what this is going to allow you to do is put shadows on it. Um, so now the next step is going to be um, we're going to go to Array and then Light. And then we're going to drag the light under the array. And this is how I've lit all my tracks, oh, I don't know, forever really. It's just a simple array and light. Um, let's see, drop the copies down, we don't need that many. Um, the radius, that looks good. So light, um, you're going to want to, under shadow, you're going to want to uh, drop that down, shadow map soft, and that's going to give you a nice shadow. Um, let's turn the light down a bit. And another nice thing to do is, um, add some caps to your text and that gives you a nice rounded edge turn the steps all the way up or it's really chunky um, I'll create a new material really quick for the text uncheck specular, color something like that um, luminance, reflection luminance at 10% reflection at 10% that looks good Yeah, this is something like that. And you can play around with how far away the floor is, um, the intensity of the light, uh, different different amounts of light. Like here's four copies. 
and you'll get it you'll get nice shadows but um for now that looks pretty good it's not centered it's not there's no cool materials i generally um spend a lot of time creating materials from scratch uh for all the text that i use <coughs> but for a tutorial it's pretty good doesn't look too bad. So now I'm going to go into my render settings, output, um, go to frame range, all frames. The frame rate of 25 is fine because we're going to fix that in After Effects later. Um, so now we can go to save, format, AVI, options, um, and under compressor, you're going to want to go to full frames, uncompressed. That's just straight video. And then save it. Um, in our tutorial file, call it intro one. So now I'm going to let this render and get back to you guys. Okay, so now we're back in After Effects. I've imported the um, file that we just rendered out of Cinema 40, and what we're going to do now is um. Drop it onto the new composition uh, button. And so now we have, we can scrub through, and we have a nice um, track. Uh, but we're not done here. We have to uh, sync it back up with the 60 frames a second we originally um, rendered the clip as. And of course, Cinema 40 rendered it as 25. So now we're going to have to go into time, time stretch. And the number for this is 41.666666, blah, blah, blah. And that's going to bring it back to the actual speed. So now if we bring it back into our original um, JPEG render, we can see that it fits in the work area. Um, so a couple of tips for editing with um, tracks like this is that... Um, it's always nice to have kind of a like a like a speed syncing. So I'm going to go into Twixter. I'm going to set the frame as frame rate as 60. And if we keyframe speed, I'm going to hit U to bring the keyframes down and um, put the 100 just before it starts. And I'll bring it up to I don't know something like 300. That's going to make it go pretty fast. And then bring it back to 20. And we can do that again over here. Keyframe. Um, 300-ish. And then again to 20. And that's going to give kind of the pulsing speed effects. So it's going to like fast, slow, fast, slow. And you can use that. Um, uh, do that to the beat of the music. And it looks um, really good, especially with like a with a flare or um, light burst effect on the beat as well. So you can see that it it um, pulses really nicely. And uh, make sure to use 60 frames a second, not 25. And that's about it. I mean, that's going to give you a really nice track that you can work with. Um, with Twixter, with Lightburst, with uh, Twitch, um, whatever, whatever you feel like using. Um, but that's going to give you a really nice file. So um, if you guys want to see tutorials on anything else I do in my edits, um, feel free to let me know. And if enough people want me to do them, I'll do them. I've I've gotten tons and tons of requests for um, this tutorial. So um, if this helps you out, um, please, please leave a like and, um, comment, not only saying that you liked it, but saying, um, what I can do better and what you want to see in the future. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace.